Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about eliminating redundancy using Aurelia's custom elements. But first, what I'd like to do is actually address a comment I received on the last video from Abraham. Thank you so much, Abraham. So what he pointed out was that I should be handling the errors coming from promises a little more correctly, a little more gracefully. Uh, he very correctly pointed out that uh, while the way I'm generating errors right now can work fine for the expected errors, uh, if I were to catch errors a little more appropriately from the promises, that would accommodate certain other types of errors, such as transport errors and uh, errors coming from the server that I might not uh, generate myself, that might not be expected. So we're going to work together to fix that issue. What we should do first is go into our common folder and within our services, let's go ahead to our post services file. And what we're going to do is basically go through each method and make sure we are returning our errors a little, uh, a little more gracefully. So let's, uh, we don't need to worry about the constructor here, but let's go down to this all posts previews method. And you can see here on line 59 that right now we are resolving this error object. But really what we should be doing is rejecting. And instead of resolve, rejecting, uh, resolving the error object, we should be rejecting with a new error. And what this will do is basically return an error from this promise and we'll be able to extract this message and present it to the user. So we're going to go through each method here and make this correction. So if I go down to this all archives method, I can see on line 77, we have an error here that's being resolved. Let's go ahead and change that to reject. And let's reject a new error with that same message. Great, so that takes care of all archives. Next, we'll look at all tags. And on line 93, Let's just change that to reject. Let's reject it with a new error. And we'll just keep that same error message. And next is create, the create method. On line 115 here, change to reject. And reject with a new error. And once again, close the parens. Go down to the find method and on 128, change to reject. Reject with a new error. Go ahead and close the parens. Post by tag on line 138, reject. New error. And post by archive. Let's go ahead and on 151, we're going to reject, add our new error. Go down to update, and on line 178, we will again reject with a new error. Great, so we've cleaned up our post service. Let's transition over to our auth service. And in there, again, we don't have to worry about the constructor, but with login, we are going to on line 16, do a reject. And again, with a new error object. Great. And for the log out method on line 27, go ahead and reject with a new error object. In the signup method, on line 43, we're going to reject with a new error. Great, so we have fixed our services so that we are either resolving with the data that we're looking for, or we are uh, more appropriately now rejecting with an error message. So. Now that we fixed our services, what we can do is we can go to our existing view models. So for example, index.js, 
And rather than saying if data.errors, we've gotten rid of that now. So we can say, let's just delete that. And we can also delete this console log. So we can then, instead of handling it uh, as like a correctly resolved promise, we can catch the error. And we can use a function here to say this.error equals error.message. So what this will do is it'll set the error property of this view model equal to the message that comes from the uh, rejected error from our promise on the back end, which is great. Uh, one other thing, one other change I'd like to make is uh, in the attach method, I am going to add a this error equals just blank because we want to make sure that any time that this uh, component is attached to the DOM, we give it a fresh chance to say that there are no errors initially. And then if we actually make it to catch here and we get an error back, then we can appropriately set this.error equal to error message. Awesome. So let's go ahead and finish this out by completing this convention in the view view model. So I'm going to open my view.js. Again, we're not going to worry about if data.error. That convention doesn't exist anymore. So let's go ahead and delete that. And once again, we'll just leave this.data equals data.post. And that's only if the promise is returned successfully. But if not, we can just say catch. And there will be a function that takes the error. And we can say this.error equals error.message. And again, at the beginning of our activate method, let's just make sure that our error is defaulted to not exist. Again, uh, every time this, uh, this component is shown, let's give it a chance to not have an error at first. Great. So if I go back to my application, I'm already uh, watching in our, uh, our console here. So if I go back to the application, and I'll go ahead and just uh, open it up in uh, in my browser. So I'm going to click View Posts on this first one. Again, it looks just fine. But if I change the URL to something that clearly doesn't exist, great. Yeah, it looks like post is not found correctly. But again, as Avraham very appropriately pointed out, this uh, this is being returned for the reason that I would anticipate. But let's say there's something wrong with our server. Uh, that would not necessarily be handled with how the logic I had uh, posted before was. So uh, the way we've done it now is much more robust and we'll make sure that basically that no errors are uh, hidden from the end user and that they get some sort of feedback here. So uh, thank you so much, Abraham. And ho hopefully another takeaway from this is just that if someone gives you constructive feedback that that is intended to help you with a project, um, especially in the software development world, uh, you should definitely follow through and, and uh, make those changes because it'll make you a better developer in general. But so now what we want to do is get on to the next task, which is making our custom uh, element. So if I go back into my code and I, I can close these view models here, if I open my index.html file and my view.html file, what I can see is that the, uh, the, the div that has a class of blog posts here in our view uh, view and within our index view, we have this also, we also have this div with a class of blog posts. Uh, these are the exact same things. So that is a lot of redundancy and we should really, really think about uh, not repeating ourselves. So Aurelia gives us this great concept of a custom element. So we're going to do that and we're going to create that for blog posts. And what will end up happening is that we can use something like just a blog post tag and we'll be able to eliminate all of this stuff. So that's going to be really clean and that's going to help us out. So we could of course create our own custom element by hand, 
and uh, we could do that and we might go ahead and put it within the resources folder here and put it within the elements folder under resources but the Aurelia CLI will actually do it for us so I would recommend that we go ahead and leverage that functionality so we're not really left uh, doing more uh, boilerplate coding than we than we have to so let's go ahead and go to our command line and I will go ahead and just terminate the batch job there and what I'll say is AU generate and we're not generating a component this time we're generating an element so AU generate element and we will call this log dash post so it's going to tell us that it's created blog post. I can go back to my code here and I can see within the elements folder under resources, we have a blog post view and a blog post view model. This looks a lot like one of our typical components, but there's one pretty big difference, which is that within the view model, we see this import bindable and then we have bindable value here with this decorator. And what Bindable is going to let us do is actually go ahead and uh, communicate the value of whatever we put here between the kind of parent component and this custom element here. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. What I'm going to do is go back to my view.html and I will take all of this, uh, this div class that is going to be our custom element here. I'm going to cut that. I will go back to our blog post custom element view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that in there and I don't need this if dot bind uh, is not error anymore because that's not a property of the blog post view model and so what I'll do is within our view.html I am going to like with any resource first I have to require it so I'm going to say require from and we've got to remember to go back out resources slash elements slash blog post great and then here all I have to do is use this blog post custom element tag which is really great but as I mentioned, we have within this blog post custom element, we have to use bindable to make sure that information from this view model is communicated to the associated custom element. So I'm going to therefore bind to the post property of our blog post view model. I'm going to bind post. So once again, there's going to be a property of our blog post view model called post, and I'm going to bind post from the view view model. So within our blog post.js, so this is the view model of our custom element, I have to say what's bindable? Well, that's going to be the post. So now we know we're getting our post from uh, our parent component and then within our blog post.html view we can then use the post to grab the title or create it at author you know all the information that we need about that and that's really all we have to do to create a custom element and we get to reduce our code to just use this blog post tag so I'm gonna save that and I will open up our browser and all well, right now we're going to go home and I'll just click on my third post and I'll, I'll go ahead and view the post and yeah it still looks the same but we're starting to eliminate some of that redundant code that we had before so to truly eliminate that redundancy I also need to go back to our index page and do pretty much the same thing so I will do that now I will first take this require statement I'm going to copy this and I will go into our index.html file and I will put our require at the top here. Then for each blog post, I can just get rid of this and say 
blog post as my custom element tag. And then, but I also want to bind, uh, as we repeat through each post of posts, I'm going to bind post to the post attribute of our blog post view model. Great, so I'll save that and I will open up our browser again. And I'll give this page a refresh. Oh, I need to uh, go ahead and restart our command line. So I'll give that a refresh and it looks just fine. And I can click view posts. And again, it looks exactly the same, but what we've done is we've really isolated our code into this blog post custom element. And now as you use this blog post from now on, you just have to make sure that you consistently bind the same type of post object to it. But otherwise you have to, you don't have to have any knowledge of this element or really what's going on in it. So I can get rid of that. And again, whenever we need uh, a blog post or something that looks like a blog post, we just use this custom element and we will be good to go. So that, that's really awesome. And we've eliminated a lot of redundancy. One more thing I wanna do is I notice I'm not handling errors on the view here. So I'm gonna to go to my view.html and copy over this error handling and just go back to our index and paste that above our, uh, our repeater to make sure that that error is not repeated many times. But okay, great, so now that is gonna handle errors as well. Uh, you'll notice that we're starting to repeat this error message a little bit across different components. That might trigger a little bit of a light bulb to say, hey, okay, if we're repeating that, is there a way we can consolidate this error message somewhere? Uh, and the answer is probably yes, and we will probably get into it in a later video. But for now, we're going to be okay with this redundancy, especially because we're so happy about eliminating the redundancy within our blog post. So thank you so much for following along for uh, this installment. Thank you, Abraham, for your feedback on error handling. And I think we've really uh, shored that up now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Please do subscribe if you did. And uh, also check us out at uh, AureliaCast.com. And I will talk to you next time.